First off, this is all about exponentials. So do you know the basics of an exponential? If I give you this, do you know what I started with? What's the start value on this one? Four. Four. Because that's where that goes. This is where the start value goes. Do you know whether this is growth or decay? decay. It's decay. I usually want you to write that with one plus something or one minus something. Would you agree that a person could have said one minus 0.5 and it's the same basic equation? But that one shows that it's 50% decay a little better. I'm okay with either one of these, but I think this is smarter. Now, did I tell you an amount of time? If I do say the word time, do you get I'm referring to that spot right there? That's where the time goes. Okay. So on a graph, if time is zero, would you agree that that is just at the beginning? You haven't started the little thing yet. Do you agree that this spot would be time zero on the graph? Because x is zero there. So if, if that is a spot, it's zero comma three, then at the beginning, my start value is right there. That's where the experiment starts. At time is zero, you haven't quite started yet. You get what I'm saying? All right, if this is 50% decay, like it appears to be, um, then it would be shrinking. But wait, didn't I say the start value was actually four on this one? So I shouldn't be at zero comma three. What should I be at? Zero comma four. All right, so let's make that a four. All right, are you with me so far? That I've got an equation that's decay and it started at four. Does that all make sense so far? Okay, then would you agree that they generally look like that? That's how the exponential decay looks. But if I needed to get an extra spot, like maybe a spot here and a spot here, how would I get them? X, Y chart. So let's go back and use this same exact equation and make an x, y chart. Now, do you have to put in certain numbers? No, but it'd be smart to start with nice numbers. Don't just grab a random number. Think about what happens when you put in a number. Like, like think about zero. Would zero be a good thing to start with? Or yes, I'm seeing some yeses and some noes. What, which one? It, it, does it work or not? Yeah, it works pretty well. You put in a zero here. Do you get anything to the zero power is one? But then you times by four. So I put in zero and I got four. And doesn't that make sense from my graph? Zero, four was on my graph. That makes sense. All right, find me two more points on this graph. All right, Lozano, what did you get for some points? Um, I was trying to find my calculator. Okay, Tyler Richens, what did you get for some points? Negative one. Man. You put in negative one, and that would mean I put the negative one right here. And that flips over this one half, makes it into a two. Two times four is eight. You are correct. Negative one, eight works. Now, I, saw, I know some of you probably were too scared to use a negative because you thought that would be really hard, but it's actually not. It just flips this over. If you put in regular one, you would have a regular one right there. And this would be one half to the one, which is one half. One half times four is two. One comma two. Raise your hand if you had one comma two on there. Okay, good. Now, if I graph enough of these points, 
Uh, I that this one was at one comma two. That's probably that one. Or maybe it would be more like there. If I put in two, then I'd have a two right there. One half squared is one fourth. One fourth times four is one. So two comma one. Maybe that's like here. All right, so that's how you graph. So let's do one more like that. Here's a random graph. I want you to graph it, okay? Y equals eight parentheses three to the X. If you're trying to actually graph it right off the bat, that's too hard. You should make an XY chart. Pick some numbers. And they're going to get big really quick. So maybe you should try some negative powers because then the numbers don't get to be so huge so fast. Just find three points. You don't need like a million. Just find three points that are on this graph. And yes, I'm aware one of them is going to be in the 20s, and that's okay. It's not like you can't graph 20. But just from looking at it, can't you tell a start value? I can tell a start value. It's right here. What do you mean by start value? It's where time is zero, as in time is x. If that's zero, the start value is right there, and so it's zero comma eight. Boom, zero, eight. See how that worked? Then let's put in one, maybe negative one. If you put in one, it's three to the one is three, three times eight is 24. And if I put in negative one, what's a negative power do? It flips it. What is the flip of three? One third, technically called the reciprocal. So I got one third times eight is eight thirds. I'm aware it's not a nice number, but you could say that's about two and a little bit more than two, like two and a third, I think. Not two and two thirds, right? This would be equal to two and six thirds is two, so then it's two more, two and two thirds. 2.6-ish. Would we have to graph something like that? Yeah, you have to be able to graph like two point something. That's doable. I was asked, are we allowed calculators in the test? Yes, it is official. You can have calculators on the test. So if you want to get one out for today's uh, work, feel free to get one out. You may not need it yet, but eventually you will. All right. If you just looked at this, would you have to see the graph to know that it was growth? I can see growth just by looking here. But it's not 30% growth. It's not even 300% growth. It's like one plus two. I heard some people saying that. And then that's like what? percent growth 200 percent growth do you agree that one plus two shows it really well because then that's the 200 percent growth part okay all right now what if i go the other way and i say here's a graph can you tell me if that's growth or decay yeah i can look at it and say it's growth if you could identify this on the graph, what would you have? A start value. Good. All right. Now, let's go to uh, some more mundane things. Plain old-fashioned powers are definitely on this test. What if I said all of that squared and then throw in at times b to the third? It's so complicated. Just do one thing at a time. Square everything. But do you know how to do a to the fifth squared? Fundamentally, some people are going to be the wondering, oh, is this the kind where you add, the kind where you multiply? And I always suggested you expand it out and go a, 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 squared. And then you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's what that means. And then you can figure out if it's multiply or add. Give me the final answer for that one. 
Well, two squared is four. If you don't start with four, you're not doing it right. Jackson, it is a to the tenth to start with. What's the b part? <coughs> b to the eighth, and then you put it with that. B to the eleventh. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, cool. The next kind is about where you have fraction exponents that are negative powered. So uh, if I had 2 over 4, and let's just start with just a regular negative exponent like this. Do you know how to simplify that? I gave the example that these guys are like unhappy, so move them to where they'll be happy. Simplify that down. Compare it with the kid next to you, see if you get the same thing. Well, the two-fourths Barker would be reduced to one over two, and then these guys were unhappy where they were. They go down and join these guys, and that's a whole bunch of happy, as in the power is positive, x is x squared. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, cool. So, man, there's so many kinds on this uh, worksheet. There's so many things. I told you, I kind of, like, mama may have warned you about some things in life. Now, I warned you about these. Do you remember me saying that sometimes when you get done with this, your answer doesn't actually work? That's called an extraneous answer. Solve this one. And then tell me if the answer actually works. If you find yourself doing the square root of a negative, you're not, it didn't work. Like that number, even though you think it's right, is called an extraneous solution. Don't forget to check it on this kind. Do you have to check every single answer? Well, I feel like the dentist is gonna say, do you have to brush all your teeth? Mm -hmm. Just the ones you wanna keep. Do you wanna check all your answers on the test? Well, why not? Just the ones you wanna get right. Just the ones you wanna make sure are right. So when you get your answer at the end, check it. One of the nice things about the system we have for testing is that there's typically the, the worst math test has, unless it's a final or something, uh, or a cumulative, the normal math tests are eight problems at the beginning and usually only four problems that are hard. That makes a total of 12 problems. You guys probably didn't even have any high school tests before that, but the typical high school test would be like 36 questions you have way less questions. But there's always four hard ones and you have to get three fourths of them right to get an A. So there's no free lunch, like it's harder questions, that's why there's less of them. And you have to get three out of four hard questions right. In the old days of math tests in high school, they were like 36 questions, but there was only like four hard ones and maybe a bunch of medium ones. And then you could get all the hard ones wrong and still get a good grade because you got everything else right. You know what I mean? Well, now it's not the case. You gotta be able to get the hard ones right, but there's less problems. Why am I saying all that? Because you only have 12 problems to check. Uh, other no old school math tests, you might have had 36 problems to check. You might not have had time to check them all. But definitely watch out for this kind. That's like an assistant principal gets trained in by the principal and the principal at the dance is gonna be like, here's what you watch out for. Kids going in the bathroom and vaping. Kids bringing in backpacks. What do you think are in the backpacks? Well, I'm not going to even say, but, you know, like bad things sometimes. Uh, kids that, okay, so anyway, my point is I'm warning you about these. This kind often gives you an answer that is called extraneous. means it looks like it works, but it doesn't actually work. I'm squaring both sides, and I get x minus 8, 2x plus 4. Now I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. 
Did I have to do that first? No. And in fact, there might have been a smarter way. This will work. Now I'm going to subtract an x from both sides. And I get negative 12 is equal to, huh, x is negative 12. Did you guys get that too? All right. Is that a working answer? No. Because when you go back in the original problem, and I one kid argued with me last hour, and I understood what they were saying, but they were saying, but they came out the same underneath the root. Yeah, but that's like saying impossible is equal to impossible. You can't do that. This is impossible. Square root of a negative isn't a legal number. It's an imaginary number. So that number... And another smart kid asked me, could you just like realize this early and just say no solution? Nope. You have to find the solution and then say ext next to it. You have to identify it as an extraneous solution. Because see, otherwise, kids that get stuck on a math problem and they just get learned that they just say no solution. And then they think that they get credit for it. No, no, no. You have to find the solution and then realize that it doesn't work. All right. So many kinds of questions. What if I had 27 to the negative 2 thirds? Would you know how to do that? Don't say it. Write it. I know some people could do it super fast in their head, but just write down what you think it is, and then compare it with the kid next to you. If you don't know, ask them, how do you do this one? Okay. Did you realize that this was actually three things? The negative means we're going to take the answer and flip it. I would wait till last to do that because you don't want to flip 27. You'll have a fraction. So let's do the negative last. Let's do the one-third root first. So it's really like 27 to the one-third. See how I broke that part out? And then there's a two power in there. See how I broke that out? And then there's a negative one power. Do you get, if you multiplied all of these, you'd get negative two-thirds, but I do it in three parts? Okay, because this part's easy. What's that? Three. three. Square it. Flip it. One-ninth. Who had one-ninth? Sweet. Okay. What if it had been an A, and it was to the fifth root, and then it was squared? Can you rewrite that as a fraction power? It's a to the something, and, and it's so easy to get this messed up, so do your best. Well, it's obviously the two-fifths or five over two. You figure it out. Compare with the kid next to you. See if he's just the same. That's an A. But if it's 1 over 5, that would be the same as... Well, it's either 2 fifths or 5 over 2, and it is 2 over 5. Why? Because the root goes on the bottom, just like in plants. It's a dumb saying, but it works for me. The roots are on the bottom. All right. So imagine a world where we had A to the fifth is equal to... A hundred. Solve it. And what if I said, I think half of you are gonna do it wrong. Can I make you nervous a little bit? Compare with the kid next to you and some of you guys will catch it and you can help explain to the other person. What's the catch? Don't you just put it to the five over two power? Yes, yes you do, that's right. That's not the catch. 
And so then I just do this with my calculator. <clears throat> Wrong. That is not just something you could do on your calculator. You can get one of the answers that way. How many of you noticed that we did an even root on both sides and therefore there's two answers? Ah, three people. See how easy that is to forget? When you put it in, do you agree that that's a square root? Do you remember that deal when you square root both sides and there's a variable? You may feel like, well, that's, that's like a technicality, kind of, but like, look at that. Square both sides, or square root both sides, you get absolute value is four. There's two answers, x equals four, and there's x equals negative four. And what happened, really? You put it to the power of one half. That's what square rooting is. If you do an even root like that on both sides, you got to remember there's two answers. So what's the square root of 100? 10. 10 to the fifth? It's like 1 times 10 to the fifth. You can't argue with that. Times it by 1 doesn't change it, right? So then it's 1 with 5 zeros. And I know people think this is a, got a 10 with 5 zeros. No. 10 to the fifth is 1 times 10 to the fifth, which is a 1 with 5 zeros. There's your answer. It's 100,000. But wait, it's plus and minus that. Because you did an even root, absolute value gives you two answers. I could split it into two things, but I'll let you just go like this. That's okay. But so many people are going to forget that plus minus. And it matters. Totally matters. When do you do that again? When you took an even root of a variable, just like this one. And there are two answers, really. Four works, but so does negative four, because you square it and see it works. So don't forget, it's called dropping an answer. Kids do it all the time in higher level math classes. You forget, oh crap, there's two answers for this, one. plus and minus. It. Okay, now, what do I think you're gonna have the most trouble with? I think it'll be the graphing. So we started with that and we're gonna end with it. So if I gave you a graph, could you look at this one and tell me if it was growth or decay? Yeah. Yep, that's decay for sure. Would you know where the start value is? That would be the start value. What if I said it was three? Okay, You'd, would you know how to write the equation so far? Do it, write the equation so far. And then I'm gonna tell you one more piece of info and hopefully you'll be able to tell what the rest of the equation is. To me, that looks like the point four comma one is on my graph. Now, how are we gonna use that? Okay, well, first off, should you have known that the start value goes here? You should have known that. Should you have known that this rate is unknown, yeah, but it's decay. Should you have been able to figure out you put one minus R in there? Yeah, I would have expected you to do that. And then last but not least is something has to go up here or you aren't even an exponential. The X is in the exponent. There we go. There's my graph. But wait, what am I supposed to do with the four comma one? Four would be the X and one would be the y. Do you get we could solve then? Figure out what the rate was? So again, x is four, y is one, and I could solve that. It'd be a pain in the butt. And that <coughs> brings up another topic called logs, which we will eventually, this is a little too hard, and so, on our worksheet, you are allowed to skip the ones that are like this. There's two of them, and you're, I'll tell you which ones they are. It's a little beyond you, and so we wouldn't expect you to be able to do that. Just a little too hard. Okay, so let's talk about something that is on this test, and you are expected to be able to do it. What if I said 4 to the 
x plus 3, it's just an x, is equal to 8 to the second. Why is that any different? It's got an x in the exponent. It's different because you can make the bases the same. Take a second. Change both of these. You can't just say 8 is 2 now. No, no, you can't do that. 8 is not 2, but 8 can be 2 to the power of something. Change it so they both have the same base. And once they both have the same bases, you can set the exponents equal and solve. Go ahead, try it. This is one of the last ones I'm going to do with you. And after that, we'll jump into the worksheet. Do a couple problems with you. Well, 4 is 2 squared. 8 is 2 to the third. I'm going to rewrite this now. 2 to the 2x plus 6. I bet a lot of you forgot that. Got to distribute this. Equals 2 to the sixth. Then that has to equal that. 2x plus 6 has to equal 6. I can tell already what the answer is, but I'll finish it. 2x equals 0. What's x have to equal? 0. Do you have to check it? You only check the ones that you want to be sure are right. If I go stick 0 in, does it actually work? True to the... 3 times 2 is 6 is equal to 2 to the 6th. It looks like it worked to me. I just checked it. All right, let's open the worksheet. Everybody find the worksheet and open it up. I'm going to do the first couple problems together. This is one of those you need to uh, take responsibility here because I'm not putting a drop box for this. That means you could just skip the whole thing, and I'd never know. Except I will look at your test and go, oh, crap, you didn't study for the test. So study for the test. It's a practice test with a key. Should you do it? I would. Would I do every single problem? Probably not. I'd actually probably skip some of the easy ones. If I'm like, too easy, too easy, too easy, I'd skip a few. But I wouldn't skip the hard ones because I'd know there's one like that on the test. I better try it. So do as much of this as you feel like you should. But there is a couple that I'm for sure suggesting you skip because I think they'll just confuse the heck out of you and two different. Would you read me number one, please? Just, just so I can do one with you and then we'll go on from there. Like that? So just read the ex characters in exact order. Three parentheses. Yep. Y parentheses negative to exponent negative to negative. There we go. And then parentheses x to the eighth times y to the second. Like that? Okay, good. So then we start with, I personally would jump right to this power. Why? Because it's, Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You do the stuff in parentheses, but there's nothing I can do in there, or nothing I can do in there. So then I jump to the power. So then this negative two power means I'm going to hmm, flip it and square it. I'm going to choose to square it first. X to the five and then square it is X to the tenth. Y squared is y to the 2. But then it's negative power. That means 1 over all of that. Notice the 3 didn't get hit by that power. So that 3 is not on the bottom. That 3 is timesed by all this, which really means it's going to go to the top because 3 is like 3 over 1. So all of that simplifies down to 3 over x to the 10th 
y squared times, notice these are on the top, which makes a difference, x to the eighth y squared. I'm putting it over 1 to make it clear what's on the top and what's on the bottom. And now I can cancel off a bunch of things. This is like 8x's x, 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 x. And then there's 10 of them on the bottom, so most of those are going to cancel. All of them except two. And then the ones that are left are on the bottom. So I have a three on the top. And the x's are left just on the bottom. And then these guys will just cancel each other. And I think that's it. Did anybody else get three over x squared? Yes? OK, good. Anybody check it against the key and it was actually right? All right, good. Thank you. All right, so there's number one. Now. Do you need to do tons of these? If, you, if I got that one wrong, I would probably go do another one like that. Although I even did that with you, so that's not really a great comparison. But my point is, if you do a type of problem and you feel good about it, and you're like, yep, I feel like I got this, you can go skip, go to other problems. But go near the end and probably, I think it's number 32 or something like that. There's a nasty graphing one. Yep, 31. 31 isn't impossible. But 32 is really hard. So if I were you, I would skip, uh, not 32, sorry, sorry, 31B. I would definitely skip 31B. And 31A is like super hard, but I think you could do it. If you're one of those advanced students you want to challenge, 31A. But 31B, I'd skip it. We won't give you anything that nasty. Calcs will be allowed. And I have not covered every single topic that is on the test. But the good news is that this worksheet is a very comprehensive review. If you understand everything on this worksheet, you're going to be fine. All right. Now you have a bunch of work time. Please feel free to come up and ask if you get stuck. I'll help.